On the news, Fubara Swesson, 23 LGA caretaker committee chairman in River State. Police Service Commission calls for replacement of IGP Egbetokum over alert recruitment process. And IPOB leader Namdi Kano denies involvement in recent killing of five soldiers in Abia State. Thank you for joining us on News Now. I'm Simisola Atikun. Governor Siminala Ifubara of Rivers has sworn a new caretaker committee chairman for the 23 local government areas of the state. The swearing-in ceremony was held at the government house in Port Harcourt, the state capital, on Wednesday morning. The governor had earlier sent the names of caretaker committee chairpersons for screening to the state house of assembly, led by factional speaker Victor Jumbo. On Tuesday, Fubara had asked the heads of local government administrations to immediately assume control of the 23 local council areas of the state. However, despite the governor's directive, some of the former LGA chairpersons reportedly attempted to resume duty at the council secretariat, but they were chased away by youths, a development that sparked political tension in rivers as residents protested at some of the LGA secretariats in the state. Meanwhile, the leadership of the All Progressives Congress in River State on Wednesday called on the federal government to declare a state of emergency in the state, saying there is a full-blown war there. The APC caretaker committee chairman, Tony Okocha, who made the call during a media briefing in Port Harcourt on Wednesday, said the federal government needs to act fast following the decision of some former LGA chairmen who attempted to continue in office. The local government crisis in Rivers adds another twist to the political crisis in the state. Months after the Rivers Assembly passed the local government amendment bill into law, while Fubara did not assent to the bill, the lawmakers led by Martin Amerule vetoed it. The law empowered the River State Assembly to extend the tenure of council chairpersons, their vice and councillors, where it is deemed impossible to hold elections before the end of their three-year tenure. However, a court nullified the amended law, prompting an appeal. The appeal court is set to deliver a ruling on the matter on June 20, 2024. Speaking on the swearing-in of the new caretaker committee chairman for the 23 local government areas of River State, legal practitioner Evans Fufeli condemned the move, saying it could worsen the crisis ongoing in the state. Sitting on local government funds, sitting on local government authorities, and dictating to local government what they must do at all times. I think this is wrong. I, you see, this reverse state issue is one that disturbs the mind. Today, you are talking about, you are analyzing and you are making a case for Fubara as the sitting governor that should be given chance and, and uh, opportunity to govern in the best interest of river, the people of River. The next day, he's taking actions that are repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good function. He's making you an analyst feel like a fool. Before now, you are speaking for him. The next time, he's doing all that things that will upon everything. This was the same thing he did. He wanted to destroy the, the state house of assembly complex. Okay? Now, we are saying that having exerted your past, I mean, you, you have come out to say the administrator should, should hold on. You are now bringing in critical committees again, which will ferment more trouble in the state. Yesterday, there was practic a practical war, a mini war in River State. Some persons lost their lives. They were shooting sporadically. The loyalists of uh, Wiki, the former local government chairman, and the people clashed yesterday. So today, they are supposed to now make an address to the people of River State and say, you know, you know what? Let's shoot our sword. Let's maintain peace. You know, let's see how we can collectively move River State forward. That is what I expect from him. And not to now swear in uh, the technical committee immediately. But that is not to say, that is not to say Wiki and his loyalists were, were right. Because if you remember in 2015, when the Supreme Court you know, delivered a judgment against the elected um, local government chairman and they were removed from office. You know what Wike did? The same day they were removed from office was the same day that Wike swore in 
technical committee to fill in the local government area. Okay? So if we can sit down somewhere, or as long as sit down somewhere to criticize Fubara, they should cast their mind back. I don't support both situations, but they should count cast their mind back to 2015 when we did the same thing. The Joint Union Congress of the Police Service Commission has called on President Bola Tinubu to relieve the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetokun, of his post over his alleged interference in the recent recruitment of police constables. The move comes after the PSC recently released 10,000 names of successful candidates employed by the recent recruitment ex employed from the recent recruitment exercise by the Commission. The list was later rejected by the NPF, who described the recruitment process as as fraudulent. Speaking during a press briefing on Wednesday in Abuja, the union also alleged that some top officers within the Nigerian police force tried to smuggle names during the recruitment process. The aggrieved members of the union while singing protest songs described the reactions of the MPF as diversionary tactics. In other stories, Chairman, Chief Executive of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, retired Brigadier General Mohamed Bubamarwa, has justified the decision of the anti-narcotics body to go after the assets of drug barons and traffickers as part of ongoing offensive action against illicit drug drugs and cartels. Mauro explained the rationale behind the fresh drive of the agency at a press conference in Abuja on Wednesday to kick off uh, week-long activities to celebrate the 2024 International Day Against Drugs and Illicit Trafficking in conjunction with other stakeholders like the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. According to him, the assets of the convicts used as instruments of the crime or the proceeds derived from the crime will be forfeited to the federal government. In his remarks, the UNODC country deputy representative Danilo Campisi called on the government at all levels and other stakeholders in Nigeria to invest in drug use preventive measures to avoid a rise in the number of drug users in the country, especially the youth population. As you are all aware, two serial traffickers got life imprisonment in court in April. Our prosecution efforts have continued to achieve successes in court, giving the painstaking investigations and diligence in the prosecution of cases. Our watertight case preparations are unassailable. This has been further strengthened with a forfeiture regime with the passage of process of crime act. Apart from conviction, the assets of the convicts used as instrumentality of the crime or the proceeds derived from the crime will be forfeited to the federal government. Our flagship WADA program, which is War Against Drug Abuse, a whole society approach to preventive action against drug abuse, will be three years old on June 26, 2024, having been launched on the World Drug Day 2021. I am proud to tell you that the program has been a tremendous success as an effective tool of advocacy for social action and as an awareness-driven vehicle for public engagement and collaboration against illicit trafficking and drug abuse. This program aligns well with this year's theme. We're all familiar with the saying, prevention is better than cure. And considering the data and projection, it has become even more critical for Nigeria to invest heavily in drug use preventive measures. I don't think it would be an exaggeration to describe this as a national emergency. If the country is to take on the challenge of this projected increase in drug use, it is imperative that it adopts scientific evidence-based approaches that prioritize prevention and treatment. The detained leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kano, has insisted he had no hand in the recent killing of five soldiers in Aba Abia State a few weeks ago. Kano spoke at the Federal High Court Abuja for his trial on Wednesday, where he condemned in the strongest terms the spate of killings in the southeast region of the country. Addressing journalists on the recent violence in the region, Kano emphasized his commitment to peace and denied any involvement in the killing of the soldiers. The IPOP leader, who has been in DSS custody since June 2021 for terrorism charges since his arrest in Kenya, also told the court that he will, under Section 17 of the Federal High Court Act, seek negotiations with the federal government for his release. 
The National Senior Citizens Center, NC, NSCC, has called for greater support and inclusion for older persons, emphasizing their continued value to the country's economy. The Director General of the NSCC, M.M. Omokaro, made the plea on Wednesday during the unveiling of the Elder Justice Charter Plan at the Building National Youth Support for Senior Citizens event in Abuja. Omokaro expressed concerns about the lack of adequate support and infrastructure for older persons highlighting issues such as discrimination in social protection systems and humanitarian emergency mechanisms. You can organize your own group and say this is Elder Justice Club. It can be in schools, it can be in churches. Once you organize that group and you admit to the declaration of the charter, then you connect to the national, you connect to us. So our idea is to build pockets of charter clubs in support of senior citizens. So wherever you are, whether you're in the private sector, whether you're in the faith organization, whether you're an NGO, wherever you are, you can mobilize to create that pocket and then admit to that charter. I urge this organization where that is already working so hard let everybody support them to organize more dialogue sessions to raise awareness that target the abuses on the elders that are taken for granted due to ignorance and failed cultural, social, and moral systems. NAPTI is a law enforcement agency, and we have zero tolerance for violence of whatever form against the elderly. So I want to leave a message here. Anybody here that sees or from any other person gets information of an elderly that is being abused, please call NAPTI. We have heard of the story of the green leaf and the brown leaf, but our own, we don't just dwell on maybe counseling. We do the main work of law enforcement. Call NAPTI if you ever witness any form of violence against the elderly. It's time for a break. Still to come, South Africa's Ramaphosa sworn in for a second term. We'll have details when News Now returns. Welcome back. Here's a recap of our top stories. Governor Simina Fubara of Rivers has sworn in new caretaker committee chairman for the 23 local government areas of the state. The swearing-in ceremony was held at the government house in Port Harcourt, the state capital, on Wednesday morning. The governor had earlier sent the names of caretaker committee chairpersons for screening to the state house of assembly led by factional speaker Victor Jumbo. We also told you that the Joint Union Congress of the Police Service Commission has called on President Bola Tinubu to relieve the Inspector General of Police, Kaede Ebedoho, of his post over his alleged interference in the recent recruitment of police constables. The move comes as th after the PSC recently released 10,000 names of successful candidates employed from the recent recruitment exercise by the Commission, which was later rejected by the NPF. Speaking during a press briefing on Wednesday in Abuja, the union also alleged that some top officers within the Nigerian police force tried to smuggle names during the recruitment process. Now, in case you missed any of our news bulletins, or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV and AVO TV, or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria, or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery, and Apple Store. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online.
opinions are free, facts are sacred, the truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? Because when you go into public office, you must be ready to answer to the people. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians are saying in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. We have more stories from the world of business. Tamilore Akinkoli has the latest. What's happening, Tamilore? Thank you, Simisola. Well, in the world of business, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC, and Total Energies are preparing to finalize the final investment decision for the Uberta Fuel Development Project on June 21st. The move has been described as a pivotal step in enhancing Nigeria's domestic gas supply and economic growth. Now, utilizing the provisions of the Petroleum Industry Act 20. 2021, the decade of gas initiatives and executive orders issued in March 2024, Total Energy's management says it is committed to investing in Uberta fuel development project to unlock 350 million standard cubic feet per day. And Salon Business' recent documents have shown that the $6.2 million cash allegedly stolen from the Central Bank of Nigeria in February 8, 2023 was shared. A special presidential investigative team led by Jim Obaze, the property tenure of the immediate past CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele, had claimed that the $6.2 million was re removed from the APS Bank vault under the guise of paying election observers. And the court's document, cited by newsmen and Investi investigators described the theft as an insider's job allegedly affected ma mainly by CBN officials with the connivance of two outsiders. I'm going to break here and be back with Stock Market Reports. And the Nigerian stock market resumed trading this week after the Salah holidays, starting with a bearish performance declining by 0.08%, with the all share index nearing the 100,000 basis point mark. Now, despite the overall deep, market breadth remained positive, recording 40 gainers against 18 losers. Now, VFD Group led the um, losers chart, closing at 14 naira 60 kobo, followed closely by KFT Offshore Support Group, which closed at 1 naira 41. One couple. Now, today's trading section marked a significant milestone with the Nigerian stock market surpassing the trading volume of 1 million volumes of shares. Now, this achievement comes after several attempts, culminating in 9,899 deals valued at over 16 billion naira. Now, turning to a global market, as you can see behind me, stocks were green with the UK futures at 0.17% and the Japan's Nikkei at 0.23% while the U.S. market remains unchanged because the um, U.S. is observing the holiday of the June tint. Now, in the foreign exchange market, the Naira appreciated slightly, trading at 1,485 Naira against the dollar in the black market. The British pound traded at 1,900 Naira and the Euro is at 1,575 Naira in the black market. And now that concludes the business and stock market report. Back to you, Simi, for the rest of the news. Thank you, Chami Lore. South Africa has begun a new era. President Cyril Ramaphosa has announced as he was sworn in on Wednesday in Pretoria for a second full term in office. 
Lawmakers voted overwhelmingly to re-elect the 71-year-old last week after elections in May, which produced no outright winner, forcing the ANC to strike historic deals with five other parties, including the center-right Democratic Alliance, to form a government of national unity. Ramaphosa now faces the challenge of appointing a cabinet featuring his weakened African National Congress, ANC party, and coalition partners. Through their votes, they asserted that they want enough food to eat, water that is clean, affordable electricity that is available at all times. They want decent homes that keep out the wind, the rain, and the cold. They want well-maintained roads and street lights that work. The people of South Africa have asked no more than to be properly cared for when they are sick. They want the young people of our country to be taught well, for the elderly to be cared for, and for those without work to work. The people of South Africa have spoken about the land they want to farm, about the businesses they want to run, about the things and products they want to make, about the skills they want to learn. They have spoken of their desire to be safe in their homes, on the streets, in their cities, in their villages, and on their farms. The people have demanded an end to the theft of public funds and the capture of the state. Above all, the people of South Africa have stressed that they are impatient with political bickering and the endless blame game amongst politicians and political parties. They want us to put their needs and aspirations first. And they want us to work together for the sake of our country. Meanwhile, Germany is facing a grave threat of Islamic extremist attacks during the Euros football tournament. The country's top domestic intelligence chief has warned head of the Office for the Protection of the Constitution, Thomas Hardingwag, raised the alarm on Wednesday, saying that the terror threat has surged amid fury in Arab nations at Germany's solidarity with Israel following the October 7 Hamas attacks. Haldenberg's warning comes just weeks after a policeman was stabbed to death and several other people were injured by an Afghan knife man at an anti-Islam rally in Meinheim. Police across the nation have had leave cancelled in a desperate bid to avert disaster with some 22,000 officers deployed to reinforce border, railway and airport security for the duration of the four-week tournament. And in sports, mixed reactions still trail the resignation of Super Eagles head coach Finiti George after just 34 days in charge of the national team. Despite Finiti's departure, Nigerians believe the Super Eagles still have a chance to qualify. However, to qualify for the 2026 World Cup, however, winning the next six games will be a difficult task. Our correspondent Sydney Okafor completes the story. Within a month of taking over as head coach of the Super Eagles. Finit George announced his resignation, a move which received mixed reactions. Finit's first two games as coach of the national team were against Ghana and Mali, where the Super Eagles lost 2-1 and 2-0 respectively. The Super Eagles currently rank fifth in Group C on the 2026 World Cup qualifier, standing after losing 2-1 to Benin Republic and drawing 1-1 with South Africa. This result have dampened Nigerians' chances of qualifying for the 2026 FIFA World Cup. Football fans attribute the Super Eagles' loss to Finidi's rocky start as coach. The blames are, are to be shared between Finidi and the NFF because I heard that the NFF were actually um, having, a, having a meeting behind Finidi, a meeting to bring in a foreign coach. Um, the uh, um, NFF having that meeting behind Finidi, 
not carrying, carrying him along. So it was actually an insider that fed him about the meeting. So I think it's actually very wrong. You know, the judge has been, you know, he has been superstar in soccer and uh, he has contributed a lot. So what I will say about his, him resigning, actually, uh, it may affect, you know, the soccer and one and the other in that due to his performance, you know, he has been able to build up his teams. And uh, I, can, I cannot advise Nigeria to go for foreign coach because we have had so many foreign coaches, you know, being employed to coach our teams. But at the end, there is nothing to show for it. Finiti faced numerous challenges, including injuries to key players and late arrivals to come. This was confirmed in social media feud between Victor Osime and Finidi, which dominated headlines. Finidi accused Osime of refusing to honor several invitations, summarizing his inability to control members of the national team. Our chances of qualifying is very, 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 very slim. Like, I think we have um, six more games, so we have to be winning that games, and not just winning 1-0, like winning 5-0, 6-0, which is a very, which is a very, very, very hard thing for Super Eagles to do. So, but I, I believe if we get a new coach, we can get our ass right and qualify. We still have chances, despite just winning one, drawing one, and losing two. So, I believe so. Sports enthusiasts believe that Finidi, as a former international, should be aware of the attitude involved in managing the caliber of players at his disposal. Very, very poor performance, I must say, as a fan, as a very good fan, and as a, you know, as a national of Nigeria, you know, but I would say that he has not done very well. As an ex-player, he is supposed to bond with the players. Like, look at the issues having with Osime now. I believe that would have been corrected. He's been there before. He's been in that camp as a player and as a professional player. So, if there's anybody that understands a footballer's language, a footballer, he should be the one. The truth is that I don't see Finiti as someone who has the ability to handle the national team. He was a fantastic footballer. He was a good player. And like we know, not all good footballers turn out to be good coaches. And the examples are legend. I mean, that we have a lot of examples of that. Pelé was a good player, but he never ventured into coaching. Maradona was a good player. He ventured into coaching, but he was a failure as a coach. So the fact that you are a good footballer does not necessarily translate to the fact that you will become a good coach. I think that is what we are experiencing in the, uh, in the case of Finidi Church. Following Osimir's verbal attack against Finidi, reports have emerged that the NFF is considering disciplinary action against him for improper conduct. The NFF has also announced plans to appoint a foreign technical advisor who would oversee Finidi effectively demoting him to his previous role as assistant coach, indicating that Finiti's salary would be reduced from 15 million to 5 million due to the poor performance of the Super Eagle. Sydney Okafor, TV360, Lagos. And it's a wrap on our bulletin. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.